Okay, so just taking a moment to settle our bodies, to check in with our bodies in this moment. Try and lengthen the spine, soften the shoulders, and just resting your hands on your knees. I'd like to close your eyes for a moment as we just do our little scan. Again, just imagine we have a little torch light and almost like we're just observing through the body how each part of the body feels, starting with the crown of the head. Notice the forehead. Notice all the parts of the face, making sure that we're not clenching our teeth or pushing your tongue to the palate of your mouth. So just releasing any tension in the face. Notice the whole head. Maybe even taking that little torch light and inspecting the brain in this moment. How does the brain feel? Are we alert? Are we feeling a little fuzzy? Are we feeling forgetful? Are we feeling present? Maybe noticing the thoughts. Are our minds very active? Or are our minds feeling settled, peaceful, calm? So just noticing and also noticing the breath, the breath moving in and out of the nose. And then to coming down, noticing the neck, maybe lengthening the neck a little. Notice the shoulders. We're really going to focus on our shoulders today. How do your shoulders feel in this moment? Is there tension? Or do they feel quite loose, relaxed? Noticing the arms hanging down from the shoulders, the elbows, the lower arms, the hands. Notice all your ten fingers. Notice how they feel as they make contact with the part of your leg that they are resting on. Noticing your back, your whole spine, your shoulder blades, your chest, your solar plexus, your belly, the pelvis, this bowl that contains these vital organs. Notice the heaviness of the pelvis acting as an anchor, anchoring us and grounding us in this moment. Noticing the legs, the knees, the lower legs, the feet and all ten toes. Noticing any sensations in the body and also noticing how it feels just to sit like this. Remember that you can always sit on a cushion just to make yourselves more comfortable. All right, so bringing your hands together to rest in front of the heart center. We can open our eyes if you've had them closed and bowing to each other. Namaste. Thank you for joining today. So let's really think about moving our shoulders in this moment. So bringing your hands out to the side of your body. And as we breathe in, just lifting them up towards the sky, letting your fingertips touch and then exhale as we take them down. So just very gently starting to move the shoulders. Breathe in as we lift the hands up and as we breathe out this time, we're going to take left hand to right knee, opposite arm behind us, lengthening the spine and looking over your shoulder behind you. And remember, it doesn't matter if you go left or right, but just make sure that you Always move to the other side. So breathing in as we lift the arms up to the sky again. And breathing out as we move over to the other side. Use this back hand almost like a second spine. Gently pressing into the fingers, lengthening your spine and looking over the shoulders behind you. Breathe in as we lift the arms up. And then bring your arms down. Fingers pointing forward, thumbs pointing back. And let's do three big circular movements with the arms. Maybe you can even touch the elbows together in front of you. Three big circles in one way and then stop and rotate them the other way. Big circles back. And again, just noticing, noticing your triceps, your shoulders, your biceps, all moving as we make these little circles. Give the hands a little shake out. 
bring the arms in front of you, interlace your fingers, push your hands away from you, and then breathing in again as we lift them up. And breathing out, let go of the clasp of the hands, take them behind your back and interlace your fingers. Opening up the heart, opening up the chest, and maybe moving your hands slightly away from your lower back. As we breathe out, we fold forward, and maybe the hands come up behind you. Breathing in as we lift ourselves up. We're going to take one hand to, to I'm going to use my right hand to my right side and lift my left arm up towards the ceiling, bending into the elbow so I can get a good side stretch along my body. And then breathing in as we sort of cartwheel the hands over and get a good side stretch the other way. And breathing in, bring both the arms back. Now, bring your arms out to the side and give yourself a big hug and notice which arm you've got on top. So really hug your body. If you can walk your hands round your back, you might even be able to feel your shoulder blades. I can take my fingers on the inside of my shoulder blades by really squeezing my arms together. But wherever you can reach is absolutely fine. So from here, you can either stay like this or you can take your arms up Take the back of the hands together or go into the full bind where we take the front of the hands together. Let's breathe in as we gently lift the shoulders up, just noticing how it feels, not overstretching. And then maybe as we fold forward, we can bring those forearms or at least the elbows down towards the floor. Use the breath and your arms to bring yourself back up. Now just make note which arm was on top, so mine was the left. I'm opening my shoulders up to the side. Stretch those fingers, stretch your arms, and then give yourself another big hug with the other arm on top. So now my right arm is on top. Again, really squeeze yourself so that you can feel those shoulder blades. And then place the back of the hands together, the front of the hands together, and again, slowly easing yourself down. And then breathing in as we come up. And see if you can lift those arms a little higher. And then letting go, giving the arms a shake again. Let's take the hands behind our backs again, just releasing those shoulders, opening up the arms. Maybe take your hands away from the lower part of your back. And then just release them and place your hands back on the knee. As we breathe in, we're gonna lift the shoulders up to our ears, and with a big sigh, we're gonna let go as we just drop them down. Breathing in, breathing out as we drop them down. One more time, big sigh out. Breathe in, breathe out, good. Another little shake. All right, from here, let's reach the arms up to the sky, Take your hands in front of you. Now here I've got my right leg in front. So just notice again which leg you have in front and start to walk your hands away from you. Now wherever you come, where you're feeling a stretch on your lower back, on your hips, on your thighs, just keep walking till you feel the stretch. And then when you get to your edge, to your little point where it feels like if I go any further, it's gonna hurt. We don't wanna go further than that. So then just allow yourself to roll and round forward into this bend and just let your head be heavy, your neck be long, your chin slightly in towards your chest as we lengthen the neck at the back. And then slowly walk your hands back together. So my right leg is in front, I need to remember that, so when we do our change, I can put the other leg in front. Bring your feet down to the floor, knees pointing up, take your hands behind you, with your fingers pointing forward, either next to your hips, or maybe even behind your hips, and let's lift our tummies up, lift your hips up, trying to make a straight line from the knees all the way up to the chest as we come into this tabletop position. Feeling your arms strengthening in this pose. I know it can feel a bit heavy on the arms. And then come down and let's swap sides. So now my left leg is in front. Breathe in as we lift our arms up to the sky. And breathe out as we start to walk our hands forward. Notice if this side feels tighter on the hips 
or maybe it feels the same or maybe you can go even further on this side just noticing that both sides of our bodies often feel quite different from each other and walk your hands back together from here let's place the soles of our feet together coming into our Badakonasana, our butterfly pose holding either onto your shins onto your ankles or maybe even you like to take your fingers around the edge of your toes. I always feel comfortable holding just above my ankles. So lengthening your spine and then think of bringing your heart, your chest towards your feet instead of your head towards your feet because often then we round our back. I want you to keep a lovely long back as we start to bring the chest in the direction of the feet. If you can put your chest on your feet, then you're a lot more flexible than me. But just working towards that point, you'll start to feel a real stretch on the inside of the legs here. So as well as opening up our shoulders today, we're just going to think of really um, bringing more flexibility into our hip areas and, and, and the, um, all the different muscle areas of the leg. Okay, so bring yourselves up and then lengthen your legs out in front of you. Let's bring a bit of movement and stretch into the hamstrings at the back of the legs. This is often an area that's also very tight. So you can either support yourself with your hands by your side, or you can use that core strength to hold you up and just have your hands resting on your knees. Let's point those toes away from you. And then flex them as we push the heels away and bring the toes in towards you. Point them, really point them, point them, point them, ballet toes. And then flex them as we push the heels away. And you can really start to feel your calf muscles, your hamstrings, all the muscles at the back of the legs starting to work. Keep your toes flexed. Breathe in. Reach your arms up towards the sky again. And then as we lean forward, just place your hands on the floor, wherever feels comfortable, keep your back long, and then start to see if you can inch those hands forward. This time we're thinking of bringing the belly towards the thighs. So again, we don't, we're not thinking of putting the head on the knees, so we don't want to round the back. We want to breathe in as we lengthen. And breathe out as we lower, maybe moving those fingers just a couple of millimeters further forward. So you'll be feeling that stretch. If it's too intense, you can always just keep a little bend in your knees. In fact, let's try something different here. Let's place the feet on the floor and bring your belly right towards your thighs. And then hold on around the front of your legs or even maybe hold on behind your legs. Now, uh, this is quite good for me because I've got a slippery floor here. You might be on carpet or, but I'm just going to start. Um, actually, it's much better having your hands under your knees like this. So keep your, your belly really close to your thighs and see if you can start to inch your feet away from you. So you're inching your feet away. You might even come onto your heels and inch them away. And as you can see, we're slowly starting to lower, but that belly is still connected to the thighs, still connected. And then from here, when you get to your point, maybe place your hands on the floor in front of you. As you can see, there's still quite a bend in my knees here. So I'm going to bring, slide my hands slightly back and then my feet slightly forward, but I'm keeping my upper body exactly where it is. And you might have come a little deeper into your forward bend. Right, let's walk ourselves back and come into all fours. So all fours, hands are coming down underneath the shoulders and the knees are coming down from the hips. A little gap between the hands and a gap between the knees. And let's come into our cat and cow. So first of all, we just start with this neutral back. And as we breathe in, Let's lift the tailbone up towards the ceiling and then looking straight ahead. As we breathe out, we start to tuck the tailbone under, the spine follows and the last movement comes from the head. So always start the movement from the pelvis, maybe give your pelvis a little wiggle. And then breathing in as we tilt the other way. And breathing out, really arch your back up as much as you can. 
Breathing in one more time, tucking the tailbone up towards the sky. The spine follows, the neck and head move last. And then final one as we breathe out, tuck that tailbone under, curve the back. And on this last one, let's come up onto our fingertips so that we're really getting a big curve in the spine. And keeping the curve in your spine, let's sink back towards our heels. And then bring your forearms down to the floor. Press your hands down. And then we're going to have the little cow curve. So curve the back the other way as we push ourselves up. Let's do that one more time. Come up onto your tippy toe, your, the tips of your fingers. Curve your back round. Let your head be heavy and your neck be long. And then sinking back towards the heels. Place the forearms down. Glide your chest between your hands, the dip in your back, and then come to all fours. Take one arm in front of you and the opposite leg back. And here's our first little balance for the day. Lifting up your arm and lifting up your leg. Maybe we can hold this for five, four, three, two, and one coming back. Let's swap sides. Other arm, opposite leg, lifting the arm, lifting the leg, holding for five, four, three, two, and one. And as with all balances, I always try and find a focal point to, to focus on when I'm doing them. Sit back onto your heels, stretch your arms forward and come into your child pose. I've kept my hands up in these little teepee fingers. And then I'm going to walk my hands over to one side. Again, stretching out the side of my body. Walking your hands back to the center. And then walking your hands over to the opposite side. Stretch the body. Come back to the center and walk your hands towards your knees. Right, let's come up into all fours and then transition to standing. All fours, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, looking back towards your feet, strong arms, really spread those fingers, press your fingers into the floor and sink your heels back towards the mat. Let's breathe in as we lift one leg up behind us and maybe bending that knee and doing little circular movements. So. Circular movements with the leg, three times in one direction and three times in the opposite direction. That one might be a little challenging, so come back. If you're feeling that's a bit much on your arms and your shoulders, maybe just come down for a moment into heel sitting. Take a nice deep breath in and a breath out. If ever you come out of one of those poses where our heads are forward, they're called inversions, and you feel a little dizzy or lightheaded, you can always take your thumb in front of you and just keep your focus on your thumb as you take a couple of breaths in and out. And just focusing on the central point can often help just to ground you again. Let's do the other side, all fours. Lift yourself up into downward dog. Lift the other leg up towards the sky, bend at the knee and again, big circles. Big circles in one direction. So we're really just moving that femur bone, the thigh bone, moving to the other direction now into the hip joint and easing out those hips. All right, from here, bend the knees and walk your feet towards your hands. When you get closer to your hands, you'll come up onto the tips of your fingers. I like to have a little bend in my knees here and then just let your body hang. Let your body flop in this forward bend. I'd like to take a little gentle sway from side to side and rolling ourselves up and taking a moment in our mountain pose. Let's keep our palms pointing forward and 
just taking a moment to ground, to feel your feet on the floor. And this is a good thing to do any time you find you're very busy in your head. In yoga, we talk about the chitter chatter and the monkey mind. And often our mind is just jumping and bouncing from one thought to the next, or our thoughts are very close together. Sometimes it's good to just take a moment to feel your feet on the floor. Take stock. Notice what's happening in this moment. Notice what sounds you can hear from outside. Maybe some birds, maybe a, a, a random aeroplane, because there aren't many, many of those in the sky at the moment. Maybe a bee, maybe the sound of wind in the leaves, whatever it might be. Maybe notice the sounds from within inside the house, the school, the classroom, the room. Maybe sounds from within inside you, rumbling hungry tummies, or the heartbeat, or simply your breath. Maybe notice what you can smell, what you can taste, what you can feel, any temperature on your skin, even the fabric of your clothes on your body. All of these just encourage us to have a mindful check-in of this moment that we're in. Right, from here, we are going to combine our arm movement with the leg movement. We've practiced this one before. It is a balancing pose. So have something near you to hold on to. Bring your arms out to the side. And again, let's come into those eagle arms. So either we just come into our bind. Another way you can come into that is by bringing your hands in front of you, the back of your hands or the front of your palms together. And then you sort of bring the arms up and through. That's another way to hold your hands. I personally prefer the bind, just noticing which arm is on top. So I have my left arm on top. Then we're going to bend here. We're going to bend into our knees. We're going to take the opposite leg over the top. Now, just keep your foot on the floor for now. Just keep your foot on the floor. Keep this little bend in the knees. And this is exactly, this is perfect where you are now. If you feel stable like this, just stay like this. If you want to play with the balance, you can just think of lifting that foot off the floor. Never take it very far, because if you feel wobbly, you can just place it back down. Or you might like to bind completely. And then very gracefully, with the foot on the floor, let's come out of that pose. Like an eagle soaring through the skies. Open your arms again, and this time we take the other arm on top. Bind your bind. If you're doing this, Again, just make sure you're going the other way this time so that the opposite arm is on top, okay? And then taking, bending, bending first, really important. Try and keep those toes and those knees and those legs together. That's gonna help you with your balance. And then cross the other leg over. Keep your foot on the floor. Find a focal point. In fact, with the eagle pose, we're really kind of using the sort of peripheral vision so making sure we're not just looking at one point, but are able to see all the points around us without being distracted by them. And then lift. Breathe. And then open up the wings and gracefully bring yourself out of the pose. Let's come to the front of the mat and we'll just do one round each side of our sun salutation. Just to get the body moving building up a little bit of heat in the body. Not that we need that today because it's pretty hot outside. Pretty hot inside too. <laughs> so take a breath in. Breathe out, bring your hands in front of your heart. Breathe in as we stretch the arms up to the sky. Bring the hands back together as we fold from the waist. Step one foot back into plank, uh, into our runner's lunge, and then the other foot back into plank. And then lower your knees, your chest and your chin. Breathing in as we glide ourselves forward. And breathing out as we push up and back into downward dog. Take a breath in. And a breath out. 
breath in as we step that leg all the way forward back to between the hands into our runner's lunge and a breath out as the other foot moves forward to meet it breathing in lifting your arms up to the sky and breathing out back into your mountain pose take a breath and a breath out breathe in breathe our hands in front of the heart breathe in lift the arms up to the sky and breathe out as we fold forward from the waist breathe in as we step the other foot back into our runner's lunge this time untuck the toes and bring yourself up one arm up the other arm up and maybe you take your arms out to the side give yourself cactus arms folding your arms up from the elbows and then framing that front foot as we step back into plank position from here we're going to take one hand onto the inside of the mat roll onto the outside of the feet and stretch your arms up into a side plank and come back let's do it on the other side so the other arm goes in roll onto the sides of your feet and stretch the other arm up back into plank let's lower our knees our chest and our chin breathe in as we glide forward elbows in and breathe out as we tuck our toes under and lift our hips up into downward dog look at your feet breathe in and breathe out breathe in step that back leg forward back to between the hands back knee on the floor and tuck your toes and lift yourself up open the arms out wide bend the arms cactus arms fold forward frame the front foot and step the back leg in from here we're just going to come up halfway make the sort of number seven shape with the body and as we exhale go a little deeper into your forward bend bend your knees here completely breathe in and bring your arms up and back into mountain pose take a breath let's breathe in for the count of five and out for the count of five then we're going to breathe in for the count of four and out for the count of six breathe in and out coming up onto your tiptoes open your eyes bend at your knees and slowly 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 making your way down stay on your feet if you can let's open up our knees now I like to step my feet slightly apart here you can always stay on your knees just like this maybe bring your hands in front of your heart into namaste or you might like to jump those feet slightly further apart then I can get my heels down to the floor then I bring my arms on the inside of my legs and use my arms to slightly open up the knees and then bring your hands into namaste in front of your heart try and keep a nice long back here as we do this and if you haven't toppled over already <laughs> let's gently let ourselves come down now I'm going to move my mat slightly forward here because we're going to do something find a little release for our shoulders basically if when we lie down it's almost like we're sitting on a chair think of that position to find your legs and the arms we're going to be having them to one side we're going to be opening them and closing them opening them and closing them on our backs okay so make your way down as usual I like to imagine I have this little rope and I'm lowering myself slowly 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 down to the ground then hopefully this will make sense so I'm gonna roll onto the side of your body I'll do it facing you so your shins are parallel to the front of your mat your knees come in so it's kind of like you're sitting on a chair okay and then your arms are out in front of you 
like that. We breathe in, we open the arm up, and you can see as I move, I'm moving my head, I'm keeping looking at my thumb. Now you can either keep looking up at the roof, or you might like to follow the movement of the thumb as you move all the way back. I didn't move my mat enough, so I have come into a little obstruction here, but basically you'd like to take your arm all the way back, so you're making a T-bar arm with your, a T-bar shape with your arms. Breathe in as we bring the shoulders back. So maybe I've got to move a little off my mat. Let's try that again. Breathe in. Take your arm all the way back. And breathe out as the hands connect. We're going to do one now where we're doing a sort of rainbow shape semicircle over the top of our head. So breathing in as we make the circular movement all the way back. My head's still following the movement. Might feel quite tight now in the front of your shoulder. Bring that hand back to the first position we came in as we breathe out, just bringing it over the body to connect. Right, let's try that on the other side. So gracefully make your way over. I'm just gonna roll onto my back. I'm gonna press down into my feet to move my body over. Moving my body over to give myself enough space to do it this way. And then lower your knees to one side. Again, my shins are parallel to the front of my mat. So like I'm sitting in the chair again, and both my arms are out in front of me. So breathing in as we open the arm, watching the thumb as we come all the way back. Breathing out as we bring them back together. It's almost like you're opening a big book. Breathe in. All the way back. And breathe out as we close the book. And then for the last one, making that semicircle shape again as we breathe in. I like to take the back of my nails against the floor so I'm staying connected the whole time looking along my thumb, and then breathe out as we close the book. All right, from here, let's make our way onto our backs again and prepare for our final relaxation. So make yourselves comfy. We've done a lot of work with opening up those shoulders, so hopefully they'll feel nice and eased out for the rest of the day. Let your feet just flop out to the side and do any final little movements or adjustments. I actually always quite like to just bring my knees into my chest and have a gentle rock from side to side before I settle. And then coming into my Shavasana. Now remember, if you're lying on your back and your legs out feels uncomfortable on your lower back, you can always place your feet on the floor. I quite like to have my feet hip distance apart, just making sure I'm in the middle of my mat and then just letting my knees rest together. So on days where my lower back might feel a little twingy, that feels much more comfy for me to lay in my Shavasana that way. Today my back feels good, so I'm going to come into the full resting corpse pose, they call this one. So the back of your hands are on the floor, your palms facing up towards the sky. A slight gap between the arms and the body and a gap between the feet. Just let those feet flop out to the side. I invite you to close your eyes as we lay here, just to lessen the distraction of everything going on around you. And again, just checking in with your body, checking in with your toes, with the soles of your feet, with the top of your feet with the calves of your legs maybe making contact with the floor, with your shin bones, with your knees front and back, with your thighs front and back. Notice your pelvis. Your pelvis is really being supported here by the floor. and Just allow the, the floor to take the full weight of your body. Just really allow yourself to be heavy in this moment. The belly gently rising and falling with the breath. The ribs gently expanding and contracting with the breath. 
Notice the heart area. Notice the shoulder blades making contact with the floor. Notice the back of your arms, the front of your arms. Both hands and all ten fingers. Notice the neck and the throat. And try and soften all areas of the face. Again, if you find that you're clenching your teeth or your jaw in any way, maybe just giving it a little wiggle. And have a small gap between the lips. Let the tongue be free. Try and ease out any creases in the forehead. Just softening the face. Notice the weight of the head again, the floor holding us and supporting us completely in this moment so we can fully let go. Let go of the busy thoughts, the busy minds, the to-do lists, worrying about the past or the future and just enjoy this very moment. And again, maybe notice the sounds, the sounds from outside, the sounds from inside, your own sounds. Breathe in deeply in through the nose and exhale completely through the mouth. Breathing in and breathing out. Notice as we breathe in, the belly rises. And as we breathe out, the belly sinks down. Holding on to this peaceful feeling in the body, in the mind in the heart and the spirit, gently start to bring some movement into the toes and into the fingers. On the next breath in, maybe lifting your arms up behind you, let them rest on the floor and give your body a good stretch from the tip of the fingers to the tips of your toes. And then as we bring out, as we bring the arms back down, bring the knees into your chest, take hold of the outside of your shins and just gently rock again from side to side. Keep the knees in towards your chest and very gently allow the head to roll to the right. Breathe in back to the center and breathe out to the other side. Breathe into the center, place your feet down on the floor. Walk your feet, hip uh, mat distance apart, and then allow your knees to drop over to one side. Maybe take your arms out to the side of your body. Breathe in as we come back to the center and breathe out as we move to the other side. Breathe in as we come back to the center Walk your feet and your legs together and then let your knees drop over to one side. Allow your body to follow this movement so we're laying on the side of our body. Make a little pillow with your hands. Take another breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then use your top hand in your own time to slowly, slowly push yourselves up. Come back into your comfortable sitting position and place your hands to rest on your knees. Just to bring ourselves back to the space, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. In through the nose and out through the nose. And on the final one, breathing in, take your arms out to the side. Lift them above your head, let your hands meet and as we breathe out, slide them down the midline of your body to rest in front of your hearts. Bowing to you, well done for making the space in your day 
to practice, to exercise, to take moments to notice how you feel. And then bowing to a loved one, loved ones, people we miss, anyone who comes to mind in this moment. And then gently opening the eyes as we bow to each other. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today for some yoga and mindfulness.